Hi, I'm Dr. Nicole Prowsey. I'm a neuroscientist studying human sexuality, and we are starting a new study looking at the effects of orgasmic meditation on a variety of different health parameters. So some of the things that we are doing are coming to people who are engaged in orgasmic meditation and looking at how their brains work and how they're able to perform in tasks uh, before and after engaging in that meditative practice. There are a number of very unique things about this type of a study. By having both members of a couple in already pretty unique and recording from both of them doing a sexual interaction, I think is the first time it's really been done in the US outside of maybe Masters and Johnson if you count uh, some of the things that they looked at, which was never brain response. The study of actual partner interaction in sex has been almost non-existent. You know, we have like a mention here where someone did a climax study and one of them had a partner who happened to participate and it's not even clear if that was really part of the protocol they just like mention it in a sentence we have one study where there was an actual like structured partner was supposed to be there kind of thing but it's not clear what they were doing so we have little efforts here and there in our science to like try and bring the partner into the setting but as far as i know this is really the first time that it's been through an institutional review board and that we have two people who are interacting in the laboratory. We're measuring both of them. We used a mobile psychophysiology lab and recruiting participants from Los Angeles, San Francisco, and New York to record all of these measures. Ultimately, we ended up with 250 people or 125 couples. Strokers are almost entirely male. Uh, Strokies all identified as female. And these were all experienced orgasm meditators, people who knew how to do the practice. In general, feelings uh, that are negative tended to decrease from before versus after this practice, and positive feelings tended to increase from before versus after this practice. So anxiety decreased quite a lot. Sexual arousal, of course, went up. Uh, the feeling of closeness also increased, as did feelings of happiness. Now this is starting. Um, we can do it manually as well, but for some reason those markers aren't appearing like they should be right now. So hopefully we can get those going, but if not, we can run it and just do it. During this, we recorded galvanic skin response, a measure of sympathetic nervous system tone. We also recorded electroencephalography from both partners, or EEG, those are brain waves. We also recorded electromyography, so we had an index using these EMG plates and a myo armband of the movement from the person providing the stimulation. During very high states of sexual arousal, the sympathetic nervous system tone appears to drop precipitously. That's not something that we knew happened. What's kind of unique about orgasmic meditation is a lot of those other forms, especially porn, create these emotional responses that are kind of mixed. And what that means is if you show someone porn, they say, yeah, I'm like I'm sexually aroused, I'm amused, pretty happy, <laughs> but I also feel guilty, feel a little angry, feel a little ashamed. And those mixed emotional states may have negative implications for health. Where orgasmic meditation, the positive emotions still increase, but the negatives decrease. So here we've got a partnered context, a safe partnered context, that seems to really help reduce those shame experiences that often happen with sexual arousal. So we can still have those positive experiences or induce this intense brain state, but without you know, this kind of mixed shame.